Hey everyone, the number one question we get asked is, how do you get a pet raccoon? So I'm taking the time to make this video as a general checklist to see whether or not a raccoon fits you and your lifestyle. Chances are, by the time you make it to the end of the video, you'll realize a raccoon is probably not the best pet to have. However, stay to the end to see if you make the cut. Now before we get started, I just want to say a big thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare. So the first thing you want to do is find out if it's illegal to have a raccoon in your state. Chances are it's probably not, and that's because raccoons are rabies vector species and they pose a risk to the general public, as well as having the capability to cause thousands of dollars in damages. So if it turns out you can actually have a pet raccoon in your state, you really need to do your due diligence and figure out if there's any permits needed. If you're not following all the rules and regulations, they can actually come in and confiscate your pet raccoon, and that does not work out for you or your animal. When they confiscate your animal, one of two things is gonna happen. They're either gonna release them back into the wild if they can, or they're gonna put them down and test them for rabies because um, they don't know if that animal has a life-threatening disease that just exposed a bunch of people to it. So you really need to follow the rules to make sure you're doing things properly for you and your animal because if your animal gets confiscated, that means you did something illegal and you're probably gonna walk away with a fine yourself. So if it's illegal in your state or you can't acquire a permit, please don't get a pet raccoon because it will end badly for both you and that animal. So if you've managed to jump through all these hoops, it's important to know if an actual raccoon will fit your personality. If I were to relate you know, a raccoon to your typical house pet, a dog and a cat, I would say a baby raccoon fits more towards with a dog in regards that it follows you around, it's very dependent on you, um, and, but as they get older they kind of lose that dependence and go towards a cat where you know they're independent, kind of feisty and things of that nature. That being said, a lot of people are blindsided by the fact that a raccoon's personality changes so quickly because what happens in the wild is that they'll go from a baby that can't walk to leaving the nest at one year of age. That's a very short time to learn all the necessary skills and prepare themselves like mentally and physically to make it on their own in the wild. The problem is uh, a lot of new raccoon owners don't understand this and so they get blindsided by this quick transition. Your raccoon gets really big um, and it gets like really sharp claws. They start playing rough and uh, they don't listen as well so they just think that their raccoon is now turned on them and it's a bad raccoon and they don't really know how to handle it. That's where training becomes really important. You need to train it from a baby to that age. That way you're able to handle this situation a lot better. But people at that stage get scared and they try to either uh, have somebody else adopt out that raccoon. We get messages all the time saying, I can't handle them anymore, can you take them in? Or they just go out in the woods and try to release them. And the problem with that is, since it's lived with a person all its life, they never taught him the skills to make it in the wild on their own. So that raccoon usually doesn't survive, unfortunately. So raccoons got a lot of attributes that allow them to thrive in the wild. However, they don't necessarily translate well to when it comes to being pets. And um, the first one is their energy level. It's almost impossible for a raccoon to sit still in one place for long. And obviously that's a good attribute in the wild because you know that means they got enough energy to look for food and not being in the same place so they don't get picked off by predators. However, when you're, it's in your house and they don't have these things, it's hard to get them to you know stay in one room so you can watch them. They're out running around all over the place getting the things that they shouldn't. The next attribute is their claws. They have some pretty intense claws and this is good for the wild because they can climb up in trees, escape predators, um, use them for defense, um, you know, dig up things and things of that nature. And in your house, uh, the things that they're climbing are your cabinets and you. And when they're you know, bigger than a house cat, like 20 pounds, you know, those claws climbing up and down you is quite painful if you don't have, you know, the proper clothing. So if you have like a thick sweater, it's not as bad as, you know, if it was on your bare skin. So that is one thing to keep in mind because, you know, if they're climbing up your furniture, they're gonna tear things up. It can, um, you know, destroy your drywall, tear up your lamps and all kinds of things. And not only their claws, they have practically hands, so they have like people hands almost, except for they don't have thumbs, so they do a lot of things like this. 
they use those hands to get into your cabinets they can pull drawers open quite easily and they're usually looking through your pantry to see what kind of snacks you got it's important to know that raccoons can use those hands to do all kinds of things and it's really hard to you know, raccoon proof your house the next is their size raccoons even though they're not like a huge animal they're actually pretty dense animals so even though they may be the size of a cat most of the time a little bit bigger but um they're really heavy you know, like double the weight of your typical house cat getting like 20 to 40 pounds that's another thing to be wary of because when you have an animal that's you know really heavy like that you can put a lot of power behind you know their claws their teeth when you know they're attacking you or playhouse play housing rough housing it, it just becomes a lot to manage the next thing is their teeth they have really sharp teeth and obviously this is attributed to to the diet they eat, they're omnivores, and also as protection. They can do some serious damage. I actually know someone who has a pet raccoon as well, and it literally tore their lip in half, and he had to get some serious stitches on it. Luckily, I haven't really sustained any serious bites from my pets. Um, a lot of it comes down to training, and you know, knowing when to give your raccoon some space. It can't always be avoided, and I've definitely been nipped a few times, but nothing to the magnitude of some of the people I've seen. And lastly, raccoons are nocturnal. This can be a problem if you go to bed early because what happens is they tend to stay up a little bit later than you probably would like them to. If you are with them all the time, they're gonna adopt your sleep schedule for the most part. However, you're still gonna catch them up at night. And if you're a light sleeper, this could be a problem. Or if you let them free roam your house, it's a problem. Because what happens is, um, you know, they're out roaming your house while you're sleeping, so there's no supervision on them. So you have to trust that you raccoon proofed your house well enough or you trained them well enough to not to get into things that they shouldn't be in. So if any of the other information has not scared you off yet, um, it's time to figure out how you're gonna house this raccoon. So there's two main ways of doing this. One, building an enclosure, or two, letting them free roam in your house. Now both have their advantages and they definitely both have their disadvantages. Well to start with, we're gonna talk about the enclosure. So if you're gonna do that, the enclosure has to be big enough for them to run and climb around and play it. The longer they're gonna be in their enclosure, the bigger and nicer it has to be. With that being said, if you are the type of person that's going to a job and working eight to 10 hours, coming home only for a couple hours, um, taking care of kids, cooking dinner or whatever, and then going to bed, you probably shouldn't have a pet raccoon because they're gonna need more uh, playtime and stimulation than what you'll be able to provide. But if you have the time to dedicate to them, um, an enclosure is a perfectly good way to go. We actually have Cheeto in an enclosure. Um, I think yours is about 250 square feet and he's got plenty of things to simulate being in nature, climbing and, and running around, things like that. And the point of the enclosure is for them to be in when you're not home and you can't supervise them. However, when you are home, they should be out running around playing and stuff like that. And that's kind of how it is with Cheeto. The only time he goes up in his enclosure is when I, we have to run to the store or something or when we're going to sleep. And the rest of the time, you know, he's up here playing with Piper, the cats, and then uh, Luna. This is not something that they should be in long term. Otherwise, it's just turning into like a zoo exhibit where you see the animal, but you don't give it much interaction. And the problem with that is um, they're not going to get the stimulation that they need, and they're going to turn into an angry raccoon, and that's not good for either the raccoon or you. The second option is letting your pet raccoon free roam. Now this is really beneficial because you know they get so much more extra space than having like a room dedicated to them because then they get the whole house opposed to like a small little room. Um, however, there's a lot of drawbacks to this. Um, for one, they're gonna get into so much more mischief. You have to make sure your house is pretty raccoon proof. Uh, for us, we have a lot of baby locks on all of our cabinets because Piper would come in, uh, pull all of our pots and pans out, and she would get into our pantry, eat all our snacks. And because we talked about how like sharp their claws are, they love climbing stuff, and that's typically gonna be your cabinets, so they're gonna tear up your cabinets just trying to get up on the counters. They can tear through drywall really easily as well as plywood. Um, so pretty much nothing is safe in your house. She's destroyed many lamps. She climbs up on the lampshade, breaks that first, then goes and chews on the cord, then knocks it over, and for whatever reason, she hates lamps. So we can't keep them in our house. And it's just things of that nature that really add up. If you're gonna let them free roam, it's gonna take a lot of training from when they're babies to, you know, by the time they're able to become destructive, probably around six months. 
Um, you're going to put a lot of work and training into them, making sure that they know the rules of the house and know the proper behavior on how to treat your things. But with that being said, they're still going to do things that, that you don't want, and it's going to be really hard to completely eradicate those behaviors and just plan for things going to be destroyed and learning how to fix them yourself. I still think it's more advantageous and it's better all around for the animal to be free roaming. So the next topic is, can you find a vet? Even though raccoons are really common animals, they're considered exotic pets because not many people have them. And because not many people have them, you can't find a vet as readily. And this is important because raccoons tend to have diseases that need to be treated. The first thing that comes to mind are rabies. Even though you can't treat rabies, um, the animal would have to be put down unfortunately, um, you still can get preventative measures, the rabies shot, and that's really important for like you take them out in public or if you have other people meet them, you want that reassurance. The next thing is raccoons can have a parasite called raccoon roundworm, and this can actually be lethal to humans, and the way it works is um, eggs are excreted through their waste, and if you do the litter, um, you can come in contact with them through that, like breathing them in, or if you touch the waist and didn't wash your hands properly and then touch your face you can get them that way it's a really easy treatment but you still need to get it done another reason why you need to find a vet is to get your pet raccoon neutered as your raccoon ages and reaches sexual maturity the hormones in their body during mating season really causes them to become aggressive and we actually didn't get cheeto neutered till about a year of age mating season rolled around he became really aggressive towards me he actually bit me on the leg one time really hard and because i was wearing jeans it didn't have a puncture but it left a pretty big bruise on my calf once we got him neutered those hormones left his system and he's been the same cheeto that we know and love even though like you don't have to get your pet raccoon neutered um, there's going to be like probably around two to three week period of when they're just really aggressive and you just need to leave them alone. However, we definitely recommend getting them neutered if you can. And for these reasons, you know, I think it's really important that you need to find a vet. And if you can't find one in your area and you can't travel to one, you definitely shouldn't be getting a pet raccoon. Now, lastly, if you have any young kids, I wouldn't recommend getting a pet raccoon. Not because raccoons are like super dangerous or anything, but they can be more aggressive than your typical pet and they definitely will never be as tame as your dog or cat. Um, so if you have kids under 10, I just wouldn't recommend it. Their rough housing can be uh, pretty painful, especially if you're on the younger side. So if you have kids, I would stay away from them. I know this is probably a pretty long video, but I feel like it's a really important one to make. I don't want people going out and impulse buying raccoons or finding them out in the wild and trying to keep them as pets. It's just not good for the raccoon and it's usually not good for the person as well, uh, just because I see some cute videos online of raccoons. But with that being said, I just want to say thank you all so much for watching this video and I want to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. On Skillshare, there are classes on so many topics, including graphic design, photography, freelancing, video, and more. Sarah and I are currently interested in many of the video and photography classes because we are really wanting to up our YouTube and Instagram game this year so we can keep making better and better videos and other content for you all. One class we are excited about is Pet Portraits. Capture studio quality photos of your pet by Tabitha Park. I love how Tabitha explained the camera settings she finds work best to capture perfectly clear shots of pets, which can often be hard to do because they're always moving around. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 viewers to click the link in the description will get a free trial for premium a membership to explore your creativity. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We hope you give them a try and until next time, thanks for watching.